reporter Olivia Utley joins us. Um, the BBC, under yet more pressure, uh, again, about this story um, and about how they handled it. Well, absolutely. And the story it gets murkier and murkier yeah. the, the more you look into it. And what I think is particularly shocking to most of the people reading this today is the fact that Coots not only seemingly discriminated against one of its customers on the grounds of their political views, but then attempted to, to cover up. And it seems that they actually lied about their reasons for debanking, as they call it, Nigel Farage. Simon Jack, who's the, the BBC's business editor, it turns out, sat next to Dame Alison Rose, the CEO of NatWest, the parent group of Coots, at a glitzy charity dinner. Um, and the next day, he published that story, which has been a pretty infamous story now, in which he said that the reason Nigel, according to sources close to Coots, the reason why Nigel Farage had been debanked was that he didn't have uh, enough, enough funds to fulfil Coots' criteria. You have to have £3 million in savings or £1 million mm -hmm. in investment with the bank to hold an account with Coots. Well, Nigel Farage said to that, OK, but it's never been a problem before. And lots of people, I've spoken to lots of people who said that they have a Coots customers who've felt fallen below that before, and that doesn't seem to be a big issue. Well, now, Nigel Farage has got hold of a dossier, extracts which are published in The Telegraph today, a 40-page dossier, which essentially says... Uh, we will use the, the, the fact that Nigel Farage's mortgage is coming to an end as a reason to terminate our relationship with him on the grounds that his political beliefs don't align with our values. So it seems that uh, the BBC got hold of this story and ran with it and it simply wasn't true. Yeah, outside that as well, obviously there's now the bigger question about banks and their customers, uh, where we've got uh, Nikhil Rathi from the um, Financial Conduct Authority, uh, we've got Andrew Griffith, who is the, the Treasury Minister, all weighing in i.e. what powers does a bank have, what should they tell us, and what powers then do we have to challenge it, I guess? Well, exactly. So this isn't just a problem with Coots. Nigel Farage claims that he's uh, tried to uh, try to get a, a banking... Uh, contract with 10 different banks and has been refused by all of them. And other political uh, figures have claimed that they've been refused by, by banks um, uh, apart from Coots. We know, for example, that, that Jeremy Hunt was refused by Monzo and they didn't give a reason. Yeah, the Chancellor can't <laughs> Chancellor get a bank account. Well, for the rest of us, yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> um, and yesterday, Rishi Sunak said in Prime Minister's questions that he is planning on uh, bringing in new laws which would clamp down on banks being able to turn away customers without giving any reason for it. As things stand, a bank can just say no without explaining why. And it sounds as though the government is going to try and crack down on that in, in the weeks and months ahead. But obviously it takes a pretty long time for, for a law like that to, to pass through Parliament and there's not that long before a general yeah. election. And, and an interesting situation where we've got Nigel Farage actually praising the Tory government over <laughs> something in particular, the way they've reacted very quickly in his view. Reacted very quickly, yes. That's something that we don't hear very often. There was also a bit of a spat with um, John John Sopel, former BBC uh, correspondent, who tweeted saying that Nigel Farage looked a bit silly um, after, after the BBC reported that, that it was all a matter of funds and not politics. They've now apologised to each other on Twitter and we're seeing a very unlikely love-in between yeah. the two of them. Not sure they'll be going for, for a drink anytime soon. <laughs> but, but ultimately, this is about protecting free speech, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, there are people from all sides of the political spectrum who feel deeply alarmed about this, whether or not they agree with Nigel Farage, because the fact is, the only reason why Coots, according to their own 40-page dossier, the, the reason why they turned down Nigel Farage is because, not because there was anything substantive, they actually said there is nothing substantive that we can get on him. They talked about his Russia alleged Russia right. connections, but couldn't find any details. It's simply because they didn't like his Eurosceptic views. And if that's the case, then what okay. hope is there for any of us? Well, I've got a statement from Coots, not a bank statement. I'm not rich <laughs> enough uh, to go with them. Uh, it is not Coots policy, they say, to close customer accounts uh, solely on the basis of illegally held political and personal views. Yeah, decisions to close an account are not taken lightly and involve a number of factors, including commercial viability, reputational considerations and legal and regulatory requirements. Full stop. There we are. So um, I don't know if that means they're sorry or not. I'm not quite sure, but there we are. Not quite clear. <laughs> OK, we'll, we'll follow the latest twists and turns, but uh, clearly I think bigger questions now on the banking sector. Olivia, thank you very much indeed.